my name is Devin Paisley. Um, I was born and bred in Cape Town, South Africa, uh, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, um, and I think the world's best motorcycle city. I had an old Suzuki Jeep that I'd rebuilt and I had like four or five bikes and I lived in the city and I had a single garage and at that point it was like completely full. Like trying to sandwich in bikes behind the Jeep um, and then I moved to an apartment that didn't have a, a garage, just had a single parking bay and I was stuck with this problem of where do I put my stuff, my toys, my, my tools, my, my workshop. I started looking in the city for, for a workshop um, and Cape Town in recent years has gotten really expensive. Um, inflation and property rental prices. So I realized Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to afford to have a, a space close enough to the city to be convenient. Um, and at, around that time I started looking internationally at what people were doing and uh, the custom commune in Australia had kind of just popped up, Rising Sun Workshop. Um, and, and slowly but surely there was an increase in interest in what we call uh, community motorcycle workshops. Initially we started with a, a very empty warehouse that was quite dilapidated so we spent a couple of weeks painting and stripping and sanding and erecting walls um, and we, we put out an advert for like-minded people who needed a space to work from. The first tenant we got was Milo Massa of Greece's Garage um, and he was building bikes and also needed kind of a workshop space close to his tattoo studio here in Woodstock. Uh, so he joined us very early on. As time went on, we added the coffee shop, small food, a little bit of retail section. And upstairs we've had various tenants. We've had uh, like music producers, band practice, jewelry makers. Uh, we've currently got an NGO, um, School of Hard Knocks. Uh, we've had Milo's moved his tattoo studio in here recently, which is great. So it's really a collaborative, creative space. In earlier days, 70s, 80s, um, there was a lot more value placed on working with your hands, you know, and, and we've, we've lost a lot of the trade skills, metalworking, welding, uh, leather work, all these kind of like trade skills have kind of been lost because everybody's moving into the, the digital realm. Um, so to, to have a space where people can learn, share information and work with their hands again has always been pivotal to what we are. I'd always wanted to do a school or classes or lessons um, and I was just kind of stretched a bit thin myself. And then two years ago, Jay Davis came into the shop. Uh, he is a helicopter engineer and in winter, Cape Town's a very seasonal city, so you've got busy summer and then kind of a quietish winter. So Jay came in two years ago and he said, how, how, what can I do here? And I said, well, I've really been wanting to set up a school. And he said, funnily enough, I've got Davis Auto School and I said fantastic let's can we adapt it for motorcycles I'm giving a, a broad kind of overview of motorcycles and demystifying the motorcycle um, and he came back a week later with a course um, and I was like wow a dude who said something that he would do something and then he did it. We started as the Woodstock Man Cave um, and uh, we changed that uh, two years into the Woodstock Motor Co. Um, I brought in one of my girls is to try and get more girls onto bikes. I think it's stereotypically a men's thing, um, but globally there's a big movement for women to get on bikes. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, whatever, but uh, just opening it up. Um, we have quite a few female members. A lot of them are either kind of girlfriends, wives of guys who have bikes and we try and get the girls on bikes so they can have fun too. Um, but we've got a lot of independent, uh, independent ladies also who, who come down here and have started to wrench on their bikes.
one thing I didn't really realize in the beginning was motorcycles are just a common thread. It's the humans and the people that uh, make or give the machines the meaning and the, and the passion and the, and the feeling. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you're from, everybody's treated the same. It doesn't matter if you ride a scooter or a big super bike or a Harley, it doesn't matter. It's, all, it's, it's about the people um, and that we have a common interest, common thread and, and we love motorcycles. Um, and we pride ourselves in being unintimidating and easy to approach. One of our slogans is motorcycles for everyone. So that is kind of trying to shut down the barriers to entry to motorcycling. We live in Cape Town, it's incredible. It's one of the best, it's the best motorcycling city in the world. The roads we have, uh, the condition of the roads, we're riding alongside of mountains, oceans, um, the traffic situation has gotten really bad in, in Cape Town. The petrol price has gone up. Parking is ridiculous. I always say that. Petrol, parking, traffic, motorcycles. My vision for the, the Woodstock Motor Co and the brand as such, and, and less the physical store, but the brand, um, it's never been a major goal of mine until, well, it's not yet a major goal of mine to, to focus heavily on merchandising and, and moving the brand out there, but I think it is a necessary step to take us to the next level, to have a revenue stream that isn't dependent on our physical store. But it's important to me that whatever we do is based on real, real stuff. So people buying our brand will know that we have a DIY workshop, that we do a lot of community outreach work, um, uh, that we make a difference and that we matter and that we, we, we there's substance behind what we're doing. Um, I mean, I think a brand similar, you know, if you look at Deus Ex Machine and what they've done, um, you know, they opened their flagship, or their, their store in Australia, actually building bikes. You see a lot of clothing stores, New York custom motorcycles, and it has no, there's, you know, it's just pretend and it's fake. And I think people are waking up to that, you know, um, and that uh, what's real, what, what, what's actually tangible.